have the immense privilege of having the founders of Youth with a Mission, Lauren and Darlene Cunningham, with us here tonight. They have seen a global wave of missions literally touch every nation on earth, and they are believing with us here tonight that there is another wave, a bigger wave coming that will touch the earth. So would you welcome Lauren and Darlene Cunningham. Jesus party, isn't it? Well, I stand here before you as a witness. Over 50 years ago saying, yes, we'll go to the nations. There's no greater adventure. If you don't feel qualified, none of us ever do. But just think back to Jesus and the disciples. Here he is in his time of greatest need. His key guys, the team leader, he denies him three times. And then Jesus dies and the resurrection and the Holy Spirit hits. And those same group of people, Jesus has the Holy Spirit fill them. And that Peter who betrayed, what does he do? He doesn't say, oh, Peter, get your act together. I've walked with you. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. We've all had times of betrayal. We don't feel qualified. But when the Holy Spirit lines up and we line up our wills with his, there's no limit what he can do. So I just want to recommend the grand adventure of following Jesus. Hello, family. We're the family of God. We have the same father. Dax and I just arrived back from Mongolia. And it was 32 degrees below zero when we left. I want to tell you about something warm, though, about Mongolia this summer. But first, let me just say this. Caleb said, Joshua chapter 14, verse 7, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And then skipping over to verse 12, therefore give me this mountain. I don't have a bucket list, but like Caleb when he said it, Next year, I'm going to be 85. And I'm asking God for a mountain list to be completed. That's what I'm going after. And the mountain list is all the things that God wants accomplished in the Great Commission for this generation. And I believe that you are a big part of it. In fact, you're to finish the task for this generation. However many more he gives us, that's for them too. But... God wants us to understand the role that we're to play. And Dax, he's involved with the Ending Bible Poverty Now.com, if you want to look it up. And this is what we want to do. We want to get a Bible to every home in Mongolia. We've got 250,000 already. We need 600 more. And I've come here to get 1,000 workers to go and give us a month this summer. We'll have four months, June, July, August, September, and we're bringing them the Great Commission. We're giving them the Word of God in form of salvation, of a, literally the Jesus film, for all of the people of the nation. We're giving them also the Bible in digital form, as well as for the older guys, we got to have some hard copies as well. And uh, you're the digital people. And this, in that country, for example, we have, let's say 64% are under the age of 25, uh, 35. And then we also found out that those that are age 21 to 37, 88% have a smartphone. But the ones 15 to 20, 95% have a smartphone. And yet, there's 100,000 homes that are nomadic. They move around, but they carry their phones with them, and I guess they have to get them solar, solar uh, battery up. And so as we look to see what we can do, we're going to use 
the, the Alpha course in order to follow up. We're going to use a correspondence course uh, to follow up as well. But we want to see not only Jesus presented, we want the Word of God there, and then we also want to see churches formed all over the nation of Mongolia. Darlene and I went to Mongolia first in 1988. There was not one church in the whole nation. It was a communist nation. Today, there's 650 churches, but we're believing God for much more. Now, the, the nation of Mongolia is only 3 million people. What we're using this for is a pattern, a model, to show how we can disciple a whole nation, not only giving them the gospel, but discipling a nation. And we want to do it for half of the nations of the world, virtually, are below, are three million and below. So by the time we get this model done, we're going to need many teams for all of the nations of the earth, for the kingdom of God, whatever organization you work through, let's make sure that we get every nation on earth with the gospel. For those that are above, we have another plan, but this is the one we're, we're presenting to you tonight. As we do this, we know the importance of the Bible. Jesus said, go. That means a change of location, doesn't it? You can't stay and go into all the world. That's the map. Preach, proclaim, tell, good news. Doesn't change the gospel. Every creature is demographics. But as we go to the area of Matthew 28, verse 19, disciple all nations. That's the corporate and we disciple them, and he used the word baptize, baptizo, which means to soak. It's not bapto, which is quick, but it's to soak, and we soak it by teaching, teaching, teaching the word of God. I've asked Daniel here, would he be willing to go and follow up after we get the, the Bible out? And he said, yes. Just, yeah, we were last together in Africa, so... I, he's a good friend, but uh, he's a friend of God, and he, want, he knows God's want that. And so he's going to go. I've asked several others, and they're going. They're going to follow up as well with evangelism as well as teachers that will go in for discipling. Now, as we get this understanding, notice where this goes. If you will look at all the major moves of God in spiritual awakening, starting with the Reformation, it began by spreading the Word of God out first. Then the changes came. Reformation would not be Reformation, and birthing the Western civilization, 90% of the laws of the West are born out of the Bible. And so the Bible brought forth the Reformation, classical music, classical art, the fathers of modern science, all like, like Copernicus, Galileo, and, and uh, Francis Bacon. All of those were men of God who studied the Word of God, who knew Jesus personally. It's also true that education was born in a new way to take it to the nations. Don't we want this to happen in all nations? The economy was helped out of that time with the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but I can tell you, it changed lives not only then, but ever since then. But look at the, the wonderful move of God in South Africa under Andrew Murray. They, the Bible went out to all the people who spoke English and Afrikaans. But it didn't go to the Zulus, the Mbidabeles, the Kosas, the others. They didn't have the Bible yet in their mother tongue. And we also see that across, uh, well, first of all, in the Hebrides. Everyone had a Bible, and then the revival came with Duncan Campbell. I traveled with him throughout the Hebrides. And it's an amazing thing what God had. And then we also see it across America. Jonathan Edwards, move of God, and Charles Finney in the Azusa Street. All of that followed because the Bible was in every school in America that was public, and every day in every school they read the Bible and they prayed. Take it out, you have what? Drugs and shootings and all the, the chaos that is going on in, in America today. Let's get the Word of God out. And I met recently with, with Dr. Ben Carson in his office here in Washington. He apologized. They were just, uh, he was just a few minutes late. He said, Lauren, I was with the, uh, the <laughs> all of the cabinet uh, having our prayer meeting and Bible study. It went over a little bit today. <laughs> oh, that's all right. We like to have prayer there. And uh, 
And then the last thing he said as I was walking out the door, he said, Lauren, be sure that a Bible gets to the universities in America. We have to see something of God's word and its power. Look at the Indonesian revival in West Timor. It was Germanidi and his wife, two Christian missionaries from Switzerland that put a Bible in every home. It took them 12 years, he told me. And then God said, now leave. Two years later, the fire fell. Like Mount Carmel, the fire falls on the altar when you put the wood there, and it is the wood which is the Word of God. And God wants His Word to literally be used in the Great Commission in every nation on earth. I can get you into any nation on earth. I've been to every one, and I just can't always get you out. But then you become a long-term missionary. That's okay. But as we see what God wants to do, we have the wonderful opportunity of this generation doing something that has never been done. We're going to see a finish line crossed. I met recently with the what we call Table 71 group. These are the leaders of the largest missions in the world, Wycliffe and Crew and Southern Baptist, YWAM and others. And been meeting together for 18 now this will be the 19th year i was just with, with them very recently this year and so one of the things we found out as we've been working 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 we have now the unreached unengaged people groups meaning not one christian not one missionary not one pastor not one church of all of those now we're down to two left that are above a hundred thousand or into the millions we are also down to all of them that have been adopted already they're not engaged yet but we're expecting by christmas next year 2020 that there will be believers in every one of the people groups that we know of on earth isn't that amazing next christmas let's give a christmas gift to jesus how about another one the bible there's 1800 left and we want as some of the word of god in every language on earth. When I was seven years old, I was trying to figure it out and I finally got the answer, how we can get the word of God and the gospel out by simply getting to the moon. I thought of that even before President Kennedy. I just want you to know. And, it, and if I could get some big black rocks, I could write, for God so loved the world that he gave it. Wait a minute, that's too long. So I ended up with God is love. And I figured, well, they'll know at least by that. And then I found out everybody doesn't read. Next, I found out they don't all read English. So I had to go back and figure out another way. But right now, we're on the brink of having enough workers to literally be able to get some of the scriptures orally in every language on earth. That's 7,097 languages by next Christmas. How many would like to give a Christmas gift to Jesus? Would you like that? We're on the brink of something historic in the area of missions. And believe me, I've, I've been around a while. Paul and I were great friends back then. And uh, not that long. Anyway, we, we have been out there on the front lines in nation after nation after nation. And uh, as we watch what God is doing right now, not some other time, we can say that Jesus is winning. He's winning. I know it because I read the end of the book and he wins. So he's winning now. Secondly, I know it because he is and wasn't his come the Almighty. The Almighty doesn't lose. Thirdly, I know it because I know that every nation and every de uh, dependent nation on earth now have believers in it. Because when I started out, that was not the truth. But I've been to those nations, even the ones they tell me they wasn't. There's one that a writer said, but there's not one Christian in that country. I was worshiping the Lord with 30, uh, 29 of them. So I know that they are there in every place on earth as nations, but we have to bring it on down to the next level, and then we'll have another level after that. We'll eventually get it to the neighbors and then to the homes. And that's what we're doing in Mongolia. That's going to be a pattern for many other nations to actually saturate them all. I went to the Pope of the Orthodox people, and uh, he said, we'll bless you, give it to all of our people, every home. I went to Pope uh, 
Francis, and he was even stronger. He said to all of his bishops, I want every Catholic to get known the Bible and read it every day, every couple every morning, and every, and every parent to their children every night. He said it three times to all of his bishops, and he hung up a little deal that we had uh, pointing out that in the apostolo where it's there permanently now. So these are the, the statements that leaders are saying. And we said, went to the Southern Baptist leader, Dr. Floyd, Dr. Wood, Dr. some of the others from the other denomination. And as we did so, we got a blessing. Get the Bible out to every home on earth. I'm asking you, will you bless this to get the Bible out to every home on earth? Say yes. And say, I'm willing. Here am I. Send me. That's not just one of my mountains I want to see. But... God has mountains for you to climb, and I want you just to go to the, the number in Bible now. Is that right? Dot com. Go, go to inbiblepovertynow.com and join us this year and the years to come in Bible distribution. And they'll tell you about uh, Mongolia as well. Come on. At least there's 1,000 people that are going with us. We'll, we'll have 3,000. There's 1,000 Koreans coming already, as well as Mongolians. So together, we'll have three to a team. Each one will go to 600 homes, but then we'll also have community times together where we'll have music and all the rest. God bless you. It's a great time to see you all here. This is the sin, and I'm sending you in Jesus' name to Mongolia and the other nations on earth.